Yeah, we are going to get to the top part of the bracket if you are following at home. It is going to be Cusco and Squall. Now, what's interesting about seeing uh, Squall here in the top eight is he's somebody who is like kind of uh, hit or miss with online brackets. He travels a lot. He enters a lot of stuff. And if there is like a CPT event, he enters all the time. But he's not always going to be entering online brackets and not for any other you know it's probably just his schedule or whatever maybe he doesn't really like the weekly format whatever it might be but as we can clearly see he's somebody who is capable of winning somebody who's capable of playing with the very best and so i have to wonder what kind of experience Cusco has against him in his type of playstyle? They probably run into each other online occasionally, you know, given how regional matchmaking works. But do you have enough experience against his bison? And do you have the kind of personal player experience that you know his tendencies and how he likes to set the pace? Yeah, I mean, if you boot up CFN at all, you're definitely going to get some bison experiences, but they're not yeah. all the same for sure. Okay, yes, I love that. There's the side switch, the new side switch now that the old one has been nerfed. You lose out on a little bit of damage, but you actually get better Oki, and you still, more importantly, get to switch the rolls. Now we're back to the neutral here, the midpoint in the screen, and Kami is somebody who actually does uh, fight Bison quite well, I believe. He can really punish with the best of them, you know, a misspaced dive kick, and of course she takes advantage of the relatively weak defensive options from a character like Bison. Yeah, it's all about the uh, built-in system mechanics when you go think about Bison on defense, but Squall still with the likely here. First round, Ooh. immediate DP on the advance forward from Cusco, but gets clipped. Nice break on the throw attempt. And you see those neutral jumps? Those are trying to bait and punish a uh, an errant uh, scissor kick. And it hasn't come yet because Squall recognizes, you know, this would make sense for me to do in this situation. Oh, he went for the tricky stuff. Okay, he's not out of the woods yet, and he baits it out. I love that attempt. That was actually going to cover multiple options. It was going to cover mul It was going to cover wake up parry because he would have opportunity to with pun or um, punish counter with a throw when he lands. Is going to beat wake up level one or two because he was going to the other side and it was going to beat wake up drive reversal it was just the calculations were there on Cusco's side he was playing three steps ahead and the moves continue forward slowly but surely trying to put squall into check but here comes the shadow loot defense protect the king capcom sure is protecting the king they want this character to win Okay, I like that. Yes, that was really good spacing there for the instant air uh, OD dive pick. You know, from that range, it was almost impossible you were going to be able to anti air correctly. And so, at the last oh. case, you know, you're going to be uh, at the last at, at the last case, you're going to be blocking it, which means from there it's going to be plus. And that adapt or not the adaptation, excuse me, that oppression from Cusco led to that the corner carry, the the relentless offense that ultimately led to him being able to level three there. He takes the first game. Yeah, the only thing that matters right now is that plus one on Cusco side one oh over Squall. I like that. Just a little bit of a jab to let you know, hey, I'm still awake at the wheel. Yeah. Queen does get clipped low. Such a strong option there. Blocks the plus head stomp. All right, and now looking a little bleak there on the mm -hmm. drive gauge side of things for Squall. Oh, baited the throw. Of course, the purple fist straight to the gut. Knocking the wind out of the sails of Costco in this very second game. Air to air going over in Squall's favor. That was a perfect. We talked a lot about Cammy Sewell's and ability to fight Bison, but I mean, it's still Bison, right? Like, you could put in that corner a couple of crouching mini punch punish counters, and that's the end of the day. Knee pair Snipemare parried up and punished Drive Rush starter for the additional frames. Yeah, getting the big boy damage there. I love that. I, I really, really appreciate the character awareness there to know how to go for the most optimal combo there, making sure he's not spending any extra meters he doesn't have to. Oh, nice! I love that, too! Utilizing Kami's long normal range to be able to actually pressure safely and then get himself to a distance where he doesn't have to worry about the threat of the bomb. Just like that, Squall on low life in that yellow. Cusco chipping away at the tree, trying to knock him over. Squall showing signs of life. The DI! Only two hits of the scissors go through, and Squall... Mm -hmm putting us on final round looking to go up to excuse me Cusco looking to go up 2-0 oh. yeah um what something that's really interesting about Cusco uh compared to other camis that I watch is he really likes opting for that drive rush um meaty stand roundhouse for Cami, and that's mainly because it's been changed it's no longer minus four it's minus three which means I, at bet or at worst it's going to be plus one off of drive rush and if you hit it meaty enough it's going to be you know maybe sometimes plus three plus four and so he just recognizes the power that is going to go into level three yes he wants the burnout it's the threat of crouch fierce on wake up having to defend against that just forces you into that guessing game scenario and 
Squall gets wrong in burnout, not quite dead, has the CA. Wow, the roundhouse from downtown hit the chin and was just enough to put Squall into that tough scenario. Fusco going up 2-0 over Squall so far. Yeah, and you know, it doesn't matter how strong your drive rush is, it doesn't matter how much damage you can do, if you're not able to defend correctly and slow down the onslaught of somebody like Kami, you're gonna get run over. Right now, this is what it's looking like. Squall still has a chance, you know, he's still got a couple rounds here, but Kuzco is making quick work of this first one. Yeah, if Squall can get burned out real soon, it could be advantageous, but easier said than done. Kuzco went for the neutral jumps there, Squall runs under, at least gets out the corner. Yeah, yeah, we're back to neutral here, but he runs in at Stan Rouse. It has been the bane of his existence so far throughout this set. I like those scissor resets into pressure, but Squall, chalkboard is ashy. Gonna need the eraser to get broken out here to clean things up. Okay, oh, and the perfect parry. Oh, he doesn't get a punish here. He tries to get a little too ambitious with it, able to get the throw bait with the instant air die pick, and just like that, Kuzco looking to maybe secure this 3-0. Devil's Reverse answered and traded. Squall, a little bit of jab there. Maybe anticipating a dry rush or something like that. But the stand light kick of just another really good button there from Cami. Air so to air strong. goes in Kuzco's favor. Yeah, it's a, it's a good one. <laughs> Very, not quite as good as Ken's, but damn close. It's not yeah. far off. Dude, and he is spacing those dive kicks so well. I'm so impressed with that. Oh, punish counter throw. That's going to do a good grip of damage. But Squall, once again, close to burnout. Does have the level three, but so does Cusco. You really can't throw out any Aaron buttons. She got a sniper rifle in those legs with that level three active. Yeah, that's such a good way to put it, man. The, the 50 cal in her legs. I, I couldn't agree more. It is going to lead to disaster. Okay, not going to be able to kill here, even if he did go into level three. So I like him not expending his drive gauge, but there it is. The yeah. conversion off of tried and true crouching medium kick into drive rush. More than enough, and Cusco burying the hatchet 3-0 over Squall. Yeah, Cusco was able to do such a good job of challenging the buttons that frustrates everybody when we boot up and go online against Bison, <laughs> right? Like the crouch medium punches just were not there. Crouch medium kicks, he, Cusco put himself into a position where they were not able to hit that full edge range. And then it's like, okay, well, if you if I'm in that three quarters range of where your crouch MK hits as Bison, you can damn sure be know that my crouch medium kick as Cammy is going to hit you. So again, yep. spacing, awareness, and timing of pressure situations and capitalizing off of the mathematics on block is why Cusco was able to really put Squall into rough spots time and time again. I couldn't have said it better myself, Maverick. I, this is why we share the commentators desk. We work well together. You're able to succinctly make sure that the audience is understanding how it is these ass beatings are going down. And that will <laughs> yeah. unfortunately spell the end for Squall. He'll bow out, but he is getting points. Yep. Um, I, and I, I think I've seen him in another top eight for CPT Midwest, but I think if you get like top 16, you get points, maybe even like top 32. Um, so he could still be in the running, um, but ultimately his end uh, comes there today. Cusco moving on, which means that we will be uh, lining things up for Cusco versus Duel Kevin. But Ooh. first, it is going to be moving back up to the winner's side with Jack versus Chakotay. We've been talking this up all tournament. We've been waiting for this one. I'm super excited to see this one uh, for a number of reasons. Both players are phenomenal at the game that we know and love as Street Fighter VI, but also they're both really good dudes. Like they're just yeah. super cool dudes. You want to see them both do well. It's exciting when they do. And you learn something every time they duke it out. It's going to be Lily, of course, up against the jury. So mm -hmm. that's going to be up to Jack. Again, I think it's another situation where you really want to take the ball and just run all the way to the end zone with it. You do not want to give Tay any time to try to figure get things out sort of establish mm -hmm. that grappler lifestyle but again easier said than done well and I, I think i think another thing that's important to remember too is like again you could really tell in that set versus dual kevin um just how confident jack felt and i i have to imagine it's going to carry through now that he's on winner's side but before we get into that we do have some slides to show you guys just to give you some advertisements for what's coming up next 